My guest in this week's episode of Susan Search is the amazingly talented Jono Alderson, manager of special ops at Yoast. Jono has been one of the leading figures in SEO for some time now. He's a frequent keynote speaker, blogger, and educator. You may have heard Jono present at MozCon, SearchLove, SMX, and The Inbounder. In 2018, Serpstat named Jono the SEO Specialist of the Year. Also in 2018, SEO Oktoberfest named him SEO World Champion. Jono's breadth of expertise is quite wide. He's an expert in digital strategy, SEO, analytics, web development, WordPress, structured data, conversion rate optimization, and more. I first heard of Jono from a speech he gave a few years ago titled, The Democratization of SEO. I'm gonna start our conversation asking him about that speech, which starts with a simple realization. SEOs continue to perform the same routine tasks over and over again. As technology improves, there will be less of a need to fix internal links and 404 pages. Jono asks SEOs to consider what happens when everyone's website is fixed. Jono is also the creator of daysoftheyear.com, which catalogs every holiday on every day. So if you are ever curious about when Sherlock Holmes Day was or Public Gardens Day, take a look at daysoftheyear.com. Grab something cold to drink and join me for a conversation with the incredibly impressive John Alderson. We'll talk about his unique insights into doing SEO on WordPress, how SEOs are more like janitors than rock stars. We'll talk a little bit about John's impressive sci-fi book list. All right, John Alderson, welcome to Southern Search. How are you doing? I am doing great. Thanks for having me. It is lovely to um, interact with other humans through this tiny screen. So, yeah, Isn't that cool. nice? Yeah. <laughs> it's the best we can do for now. So thanks for doing this. You're you're coming from over the pond. What time of the day is it there? It is two o'clock. So a little early to be cracking open the wine, but I'm sure um, I'm sure we'll be fine. But not as early as 9 a.m. where it is here. So this is Very this true. is <laughs> this will be fun. Uh, I wanted to ask you about your job at Yoast on the website. It says uh, it has your name, it says special ops, and then there's a little description, and it says. I'm still not sure what my job is here. <laughs> uh, according to LinkedIn, you've been there about three and a half years. What would you say you do at Yoast? That's a great question. Um, I, and I, a day to day, I try and work out the answer to that, and still, I'm still not entirely sure. I try to try to avoid anyone noticing that I'm just kind of bumbling most day, I guess. So I do bits of research and development for the product. So I scope technical SEO features that might end up in your SEO, say, a year from now. Um, I do a whole load of our schema stuff. So um, we we do loads of really clever stuff with structured data. And I planned and plotted and worked out how all that works and passed it to the dev guys. Um, and then I do a lot of this sort of stuff. I speak at a lot of conferences, or at least I used to do when we were allowed outside. Um, that was nice, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Uh, and generally kind of do our own SEO and make sure we're dog fooding. So um, I keep on top of trends. I make sure that we are steering in the right direction, that we don't miss anything critical changing at Google HQ that might impact all of our users and so on. So yeah, it's a bit of all sorts. And every day I kind of wake up and say, what's interesting, what's happening, what shall I do, where shall I go? Um, and just chip away at it all. It's an absolute delight. That sounds great. Yeah, I mean, I I wonder, uh, for, for those who don't know, I should back up and say that Yoast is the, the go-to plugin for SEOs, and then there are several other plugins that fall off of that that relate to e-commerce or local SEO or a million other things. But what that means is that you have this really interesting perspective on WordPress. And whenever you, you ask a question about WordPress, it's it's kind of hard to formulate because it's the spectrum's like a mile wide. Everybody's using WordPress oh, yeah. in different ways. Uh, it's a really open-ended question. Is there anything as you've looked at WordPress, that just consistently annoys you from an SEO perspective? <laughs> ah, yes, so much, so much. So I, I should be careful with this. So <laughs> uh, I love and hate WordPress and equal measures, right? Which I'm sure anybody involved in that space will say the same thing. Um, one of the deliberate design decisions in WordPress is it the core product does very, very little because it needs to be infinitely flexible. So if you want to customize it for what your site or your business needs, you go out and you cherry pick the set of plugins that you need to achieve that. So mm-hmm. WordPress plus Yoast, really awesome for SEO. WordPress just on its own, not amazing. Like bare basics, but it doesn't even do things like um, letting you specify a meta description, 
which I think mm. many of us would consider to be like 101 level, but that's firmly plug-in territory in WordPress land. So that's frustrating. And I think um, certainly I know a lot of the stuff that is currently in the Yoast SEO plugin, we would like to see in core. Like we finally got XML sitemaps, but it kind of makes sense that you ought to be able to configure your canonical URLs in WordPress itself without having to have a plugin. And there's there's an ongoing fight where we, we would really like to take half of our plugin and just make that part of WordPress, but there's resistance because it's complex and political. And is marketing really a thing? Oh, I don't know. It's all a bit open source and hippie, <laughs> but it's lovely. Um, I guess more tactically, there's some... It's really slow to make big changes because it's open source, because it's community, and because you know you can't afford to have a a, a tiny mistake in one line of code hits forty percent of the internet. That's um, that's going to be quite impactful. So everything has to be very rigorously, iteratively tested. I've had a um, an open ticket for about two years on the tracker system, trying to look at better ways that we might load fonts, which mm-hmm. is like from a web performance perspective and a privacy perspective, a bit of a nightmare. Um, and I, I've come up with a better way to do it. Everybody's on board. Everybody agrees. And it will be seven, eight years before that gets anywhere near core because of the amount of process and iteration it has to go through to be a thing. So it's frustrating to have solved problems, but for them not to have landed yet. But hey. Uh, uh, that makes perfect sense. I, I think it's all this will dovetail pretty well. You first got on my radar. Like the first time I ever heard of you was when you gave a speech about the democratization of SEO. And so oh, nice. I went back and watched it. There's the, you're speaking at at Mozcon in this in this video I was watching. And to kind of set the table for the talk, there's this realization that you that you have or that you go through that you can kind of watch the whole audience go through. And so you say, <laughs> okay, you know how you're always making the same kind of changes every month and people still struggle with 404s and internal linking and uh, a handful of other things, um, and the crowd's kind of like nodding. Yeah, I agree with you. And then you you kind of flip it and you go, "What if the problem was us?" And so, what <laughs> if the problem was us? Um, you know, how could we be the problem? We we solve all that stuff. Yeah, we do, but we we revel in it, right? There's this kind of beleaguered superhero um, thing that the SEO industry does really, really well. Like we. We hate that everything's so broken, but we love that we're the ones who fix it. And we love to be the smartest people in the room. And we love to have to know about all the latest trends because those that's the kind of people that SEO attracts, right? We want to be right. hustly, entrepreneurial fixers. Um, but yeah, if we didn't exist or if we maybe changed the way we approached some of those problems and we stopped talking about technical things that only technical SEOs can solve, but we started talking about the benefits of quality and process and standards in a way that other bits of other industries do, we might make ourselves less, might make businesses less dependent on us as the magician in the corner who knows about the mm. Google things. I think maybe maybe that's just a process we're going through. I, I think we're getting better. I think there's less of that kind of SEO magic now. And a lot of businesses are maturing and starting to be more sophisticated when it comes to thinking about okay how do we how do we make this content appealing to the right audience and to search engines and callers and not be full of bugs and so on but there's a while to go and we certainly have to unpick all of that mess we've made i think so yeah it's difficult and i i, I it, it's i speak from a position of privilege i realize because a big part of my job is doing that at a ridiculous scale i'm like Today, I'm going to fix 11 million websites with my clever, clever <laughs> SEO tricks. Um, but I like the idea that if we do that in WordPress and we do it centrally, we do it once and it's done. Yeah. And it doesn't break. It doesn't need maintaining. It doesn't need iterating. And meanwhile, the rest of the SEO industry is, as you say, just fixing and fixing and fixing and the wheels are spinning. Yeah, it's a, it's it's a bit of a hamster place. wheel. Uh, so yeah. I want to make sure I get this, this in here too, because there's a tendency, I think, to think that this is all about the relationship between the SEO and the developer, because as long as I can remember, there's been a healthy tension between <laughs> SEOs and, and developers, to put it nicely. Yep. Um, but but you go and you go and say um, it's not just the developers. That who who else aren't we serving? Who else aren't we reaching um, when we stay in our silo? So I think one of the things that has become apparent to all of us. In the, in the last you know, decade or so, is that effective SEO is much more than just the SEO bit in the middle. You also have to affect 
brand and I don't know, security or performance and accessibility and a hundred other things. And there'll be a hundred new other additional things tomorrow and next week and next year. And we've gone far past the point where we can comfortably be specialists and experts in all of those areas. So mm. and then for any given business, they're going to have different amounts of strengths and weaknesses in those areas that will require different amounts of levers and investment and resource and people and priorities. And in order to affect those changes and to do good SEO, we have to facilitate, integrate, educate all those different parts of the organization. And it might be that the most effective thing, use this example periodically, the most effective thing you could do from an SEO perspective for a restaurant might be to source fresher ingredients because then you have a higher propensity to get good reviews, which might affect your local listings, which might get you more traffic, etc. Or you might um, enter into a partnership with a um, another site who retails your products um, in order to increase the number of people who purchase them or see them so that you have some kind of downstream effect. You might do SEO in a way that doesn't involve creating content or fixing websites or acquiring links and still drive more traffic and conversions that can be attributed to the channel. So all of these areas require us to think way outside of that box of being the SEO wizard and start to think, how do we make our organizations and their brands and their products and, and their services naturally have that right kind of product market fit that fuels that SEO flywheel, which is a, that's a hard place to do. And it certainly... I think I called this out in the, the MozCon talk, buying beers for developers is a clever tactical hack that gets you through day to day for some of that, but it doesn't address the underlying problem, which right. is, is the organizational structure right? Is the is the, the um, culture right in a way that stops these things from breaking in the first place? That's wonderful. And you've used these terms, SEO wizard. I heard you say superstar. In, this, in the talk, you talk about us wanting to be rock stars. And the idea that you have is that Rock stars don't don't scale well. They just they it doesn't happen. Yeah. Um, and that it's better. I don't know if psychologically or if in real terms for us to rather than look at ourselves as rock stars, to look at ourselves as janitors. Uh, explain this concept. So I think again, we're like there are so many parts of this broader SEO connected ecosystem that it is wholly unfeasible to expect that. Even the largest organizations will employ a team of SEOs who are world-leading experts in, I don't know what's the latest thing, web performance or schema or structured data mm -hmm. and X and Y and Z and A and B and C. At some point, we have to accept that we cannot be the masters of all of those disciplines and we cannot own it. That, in that knowledge or that expertise either has to live within the organization or within the platforms that power their tech. What we can do is know just enough about those areas in order to minimize risk, to spot issues and errors, to tidy up afterwards a little bit, much more like a janitor than, than a superhero. But that's not a particularly appealing sell. And I don't, it's a really hard challenge because SEOs tend to own these areas because nobody else in an organization does. Because historically, the way most businesses have worked when it comes to the internet is to say, what is the least we can do? Uh, how do we get our website launched? How do we get these features? How do we ship it? Because minimal viable product is how most aspects of business work. But when it comes to SEO, anything less than aiming for perfect means you'll come second. And if you're second, right. you may as well be last. Right? So there's a fundamental mind shift, which means somebody has to be responsible for quality, for performance, for security, for accessibility in a way that no other part of the business ever has. So we start juggling all these plates and picking them up and trying to own them when we should be maybe taking a step back and saying, look, and educating people that this thing works fundamentally differently to other marketing channels and other activities, and that it's a resource and, and culture challenge as much as it is uh, an expertise challenge. Yeah, it's it's not, there's no easy answer, I think. No, there isn't. I, I think that all in, though, there's this, this call to be a little bit more humble, to be a little bit more uh, respectful that you're part of a larger organization. Uh, I think it's great. It, the, the last thing I wanted to ask you about this speech was there's a question you have, which is, um, you know, what happens when everyone's website is fixed? And so yeah. the idea is that the tech's getting better. WordPress and Gutenberg are getting in bed with Google. It's one of the things you mentioned. Uh, before long, a lot of these things that we work on a lot are they're going to be fixed. You know, it's not, it's not going to be a problem. I think you started to... You started to answer this with your 
uh, with your comments about fresh ingredients at the grocery store and everything like that, <laughs> what ha- what becomes of the SEO if if uh, out of the box the website is fixed? Oh, maybe we can all do some other stuff, right? <laughs> um, I I think obviously the people who make their money from fixing 404s will be concerned because there will be less of that to go around. And I think that's actually, whilst I say to the previous point, it's, it's a hard challenge to answer this, how do we do SEO? I think the big part of the answer that I found and I pursue as part of my job is we make the underlying platforms and ecosystems and technology incrementally better and we remove the surface area for things that can go wrong. But yeah, you forecast that forward and you look at what WordPress is doing, what's happening with Google, what's happening with projects like AMP, and you suddenly, you can very clearly see a trajectory where there are fewer broken things. And the mm-hmm. average website is a bit faster, a bit smarter, a bit better, a bit prettier, a bit more future-proof. Yeah, and the amount of work involved and available for fixing the same kinds of things will definitely diminish. I think at that point then, yeah, we need to decide what are we and what do we become. I think there's definitely still a gap where we can step into being consultants on business models and product market fits and communication strategies. But I don't think that's that increasingly less of that is going to involve how do I optimize this web page? How do I speed up this image? How do I prevent these 404s? Way beyond just technical SEO, because um, the less the less of that there is to be done, the more um, crowded spaces like digital PR and content marketing will become um, because we're all going to want to be doing something, right? So it's um, it'll be interesting to see what happens to the industry. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Well, I want to shift gears a little bit. You you recently wrote a blog post, if I'm not mistaken, uh, about a month ago. About it, the the title of it is "Silence is Golden versus SEO," um, and there's this important term I learned from from this post called directory traversal. Directory traversal. What does that mean exactly, and why should SEOs care about it? This is super nerdy, right? So one of the things I do as part of my my day-to-day is I also, as well as looking at the Yoast SEO stuff, I do a fair bit on WordPress itself and WordPress.org, the website. Um, And I look for weird edge cases and interesting SEO challenges that nobody's really thinking about. Like, so because... This 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 kind of thing maybe affects 0.001% of Yoast SEO or WordPress users, which means if we fix it, that's tens of millions of websites. So it's worth going down to a level of granularity in SEO that sure. people rarely do. So this is, um, if your server is configured in a certain way, um, which is quite often the case on out-of-the-box hosting, you can just put the URL of the directory in um, and the server will show you what the files are in that directory. Right. Like that's how they're meant to work. It's what they're meant to do. Um, and sometimes that can be a security issue because you're going to find things that people thought they'd hidden or hadn't linked to and might just trawl around through your files and your uh, best case, they may be find some invoices. Worst case, they may be find your database information. Not good. Um, so it's pretty basic practice to turn that off, um, which WordPress does automatically. But the way it does it creates an SEO problem because now instead of showing you those sensitive files, WordPress shows you an empty page. And that empty page returns a 200 HTTP status, which says to Google, this is fine. And A, it's not fine. It's an empty page. Mm -hmm. And B, you've now told me as somebody poking for vulnerabilities that there's a folder there, which might lead me to be able to go and find other stuff. So it sort of fixes the underlying problem, but it introduces an interesting SEO question of how should we... How should we respond to search engines when there is a technically valid but empty page? And there isn't really a good HTTP response for this. You shouldn't be a 404. It shouldn't be a 200. Um, So I've been looking at ways that we can make that a bit more intelligent, make it behave a bit more sensibly. I've I've got a few things like this open at the moment. There's some of the security-related stuff in WordPress, but it's just way down into the very, very weird niches of technical SEO. I find it fascinating, but um, I I think for most sites and businesses, it's probably a bit granular. I think it's very interesting. I mean, I can remember if you've ever logged into a, a WordPress site through FTP or something like that, you you see these, you see this stuff. You know, it's it's the silence is golden. Um, <laughs> I wonder, I wonder what you think. Do you think Google sees enough? WordPress is such a huge part of the World Wide Web, where they can kind, of, they get it. There, there's there's yeah. kind of no no. It's six. It doesn't really make a big difference one way or the other. Yeah, absolutely. I would be amazed if they don't have special rules to handle these kinds of predictable scaled issues. Otherwise, the amount of 
of the amount of processing overhead they would burn just solving these problems over and over again. So yeah, this and a hundred other things they probably have some kind of routing for, but I don't think that means we shouldn't fix it. I think um, it right. is a quality issue. It like There are other systems than Google. Um, there are systems that scrape and process and crawl and extract pages and HTTP responses, which we should um, give the right kind of signals for. That's one of the reasons I get really frustrated when, for example, Google representatives will say things like, it's fine to use a 302 redirect instead of a 301. And right. for Google, yeah. in that context, it's maybe fine, but browsers handle those things differently. Like a 301 is cached by the browser, which changes um, performance signals, as you may, all sorts of things and all sorts of reasons. So yeah, even if Google are managing to process this, I'm reasonably sure that Bing aren't and Facebook definitely aren't, and they crawl very inefficiently um, at, at massive scale. So and uh, yeah, a hundred other reasons. So it's worth fixing this sort of thing just to get it right. Yeah, it's, I couldn't agree more. So the before I let you go, I wanted to wish you uh, a happy Forgive Mom and Dad Day and a happy <laughs> Awkward <laughs> Moments you. Day. Uh, the only reason I know about these days is because of a website called daysoftheyear.com, which you started, I believe, and, main and can currently maintain. I love this website. Yeah, way back. Tell us, uh, tell us the backstory. <laughs> You know, how, um, yeah, how this, this, is my, this is my pet project. Okay. This is, well, two, two flavors. One is um, it got very, very close to Christmas one year, and I realized that I hadn't bought my parents a gift and all the shops were closed. And the only real option was to go and find a calendar from like the corner shop that was still open. And I thought, oh, I'm going to put some funny dates in it to try and turn it into a, at least a passable gift. So I did some research, and there's all these weird events. There's like Talk Like a Pirate Day. There's Ninja Day. There's Hug a Plumber Day. And nobody was doing a really good job of curating and organizing them all. So um, little old web developer me put my SEO hat on, started chipping away at it, and gradually realized that there's really a thing here. And it does phenomenally well because it, um, it, it ranks first, second, third for most of these um, keywords, each of which is like a tiny niche. None of them are huge, mm. but it does really well across the board. So we get millions of page views a month from people Googling all these weird events. Um, oh, sure. It's been running for about a decade now, and it's how I've really leveled up my WordPress knowledge. Like I've built and rebuilt and optimized and rebuilt the front end, the back end, the WordPress bits, the plugins so many times now as I've learned and laid, laid on. And it's really pushed me to um, become a good developer, which I certainly wasn't when I started out building it, but it's been um, a great learning curve. Well, it's, it's awesome. and I had no idea there were this many days uh, that were celebrated. So this has been very cool for me. Um, I, I'll, I'll link to it in the show notes so people can go to it, but days of the year .com. Uh, I nice. want to fast forward. Now. This is everyone's favorite part of the show. This is where Greg Gifford gives me a question and I have no oh. context for the question. He usually gives me one or two words and it's a bit of a high wire act for you and for me. So we'll see how it Exciting. goes for, for, for Jono. He has one word book list. Does this register with you? Booklist. Booklist. Yeah, great shout. So I, um, I have a recommendation, recommended books list on my webpage, which I forget to update, um, but do periodically remember too. So I'm a massive fantasy and science fiction nerd, um, as I extol on that page, because um, it, it's the way I relax, it's how I unwind, but also because it fuels creative ideas and different perspectives. I could get really geeky about mm -hmm. sci-fi based in a universe with, I don't know, slightly different laws of physics or different societies and different politics. And it's a way of um, kind of stimulating creative juices and ideas. So I guess um, the list itself, um, go and have a look. It's on my website. But go, if nothing else, check out um, Children of Time by Adrian Chayskovsky, which is the one of the best books I have ever read. It's about a... Um, a terraforming attempt that went wrong and accidentally created a race of sentient spiders, which sounds incredibly gimmicky, <laughs> but it's all written from the perspective of the spiders and it's their society evolving. And they have um, challenges around gender roles and around interracial challenges with, with the ants and all sorts of, like, it sounds incredibly twee, but it is so, so well done and it's wonderful. Really alien mindset. It's great. This is awesome and I can completely understand why Greg made that the out of context question. So <laughs> I, I love it uh, very much. Jono, this has been great. I, I, I love talking to you. I, I'm happy we could go down a rabbit hole a little bit there uh, on some WordPress topics, on some technical SEO topics. 
How do people get in touch with you if they want to learn more? That's a good question. Um, I'm all over Twitter uh, at John Alderson or JohnOalderson.com or through Yoast um, or LinkedIn, if that's really still a thing other than just um, link selling spam. Um, but yeah, uh, Google me. I'm, that should be fairly easy to find. Hopefully. Well, there is a landscape architect who I feel really guilty that I've pushed him off page one of Google. Um, that, that keeps me awake. <laughs> well, <laughs> what can you do? Uh, well, thank you for, for drinking with me in the afternoon or early morning here in Chicago. I'm going to give you a virtual cheers, and we'll sign yeah, off cheers. for now from Studs Happy and Search. Thursday. We'll be back, John Alderson. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Nice to, nice to have you. Nice to be here, even. <laughs>